and it's a very simple call. So as before, we start with the object, so my mutable array, space, and then it's simply, there's a method called add object. And again, it has a data type of ID because it doesn't know what type what type of object you want to put into the mutable array. But again, we're going to use strings. Okay, so I'm going to put some strings. I'm going to copy that and paste it a few times. So Luke, Leah, Darth, Obi Wan, R two D two, C three P O. Okay, so like last time, we're going to check to see if our mutable array actually has those objects in it. So we'll do nslog and we're dealing with strings, so percent at and then we can just call our mutable array, which is my mutable array. Okay, save that and run it. And there we have it. So it's given us back those six string objects. So we we know now that this method has worked. It's added each one of these objects to the mutable array. And we can use many of the same methods with the mutable array as we can with the the, just the normal NS array. So we can we can say the third character is sent at my mutable array object at index. Now the third the third character is Darth, so the index will be 0, 1, 2. Okay, remember the index starts at 0. So run that. And we have the third character is Darth. Okay, so the f one of the fundamental differences with between the mutable array and the array is we can add and remove. So let's remove one of the string objects from this mutable array. So we can call my mutable array remove object. Actually, let's. Uh, Let's use remove object at index. Start with okay, remove object at index two. So zero, one, two. So it's going to remove Darth from the array. And then we want to call this again. Okay, so this is the original array here, Luke, Leah, Darth, Obi-Wan, R2D2, C3PO. We've called this method remove object at index, second index, 0, 1, 2, remove Darth. So now we have Luke, Leah, no Darth, Obi-Wan, R2D2, C3PO. Okay, so we've re removed the object that was at the index number 2. So we've seen 
up here that we can add an object to the mutable array. We can remove an object from the mutable array. We can also insert objects at any index point of the array. So we can say my mutable array insert object at index. So insert object we'll insert a string object Han at index and let's put him as the first let's make him the first object so at index 0 okay and do that again so we had we had these six then we removed Darth okay no Darth there and now we've inserted Han is as the very first object so the object at index 0 so everything else has moved down now okay so that's inserting an object at a particular index Okay, now all of the calls that we've been making so far have been to the console. So what we'd like to do now is make these same calls and but put them in a label. So we know how to do that. self dot my label dot text equals my mutable array object at index to run that and we have Leah so Leah is the third object which means it's the second index okay Han is at index 0 Luke is at index 1 Leah is at index 2, so Leah appears on our label. Okay, so that's placing one particular object into our label. What if we wanted to put the whole array into our label? Self dot my label dot text equals and we've seen how to do this last week when <clears throat> when we called ns string a method from the ns string class called string with format so percent at and then my mutable array now there's six objects in there so hopefully they will they will uh, they will all fit okay there we go now it's not particularly formatted well because it's the formatting has taken the format of how the array is is structured with these open brackets and um, commas in between each one. Okay, so it's not particularly nice, but we can change that by rather than sending the whole array as we've done here, we can use these calls here to send each individual object as a separate string. Okay, so we could go self dot my label dot text equals now the same ns string string with format
and we could do something like 1% at, 2% at, 3% at, 4% at, 5% at, 6% at, Okay, now we have to now we have to make reference to each of these individually because it's this method now is expecting one, two, three, four, five, six individual references. Okay, so we can go my mutable array object at index zero, comma. And I'll copy this. So zero object index one, object at index two, object index three, object at index four, and object at index five. And then close off our method and semicolon and run that. So now it's formatted one. So the object object at index zero is now placed here and so forth. Okay, so using string with format is a really good way of taking the individual elements of an array and um, mixing that in with formatting like we've done here with the numbers. Okay, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a text field and a button to our view that will enable the user to input a name and add that name to an array and then each time they add a new name the array will update and display all of the names in this label okay so first off we need a text field so drag a text field onto there and we want a round rec button okay so head on over to the .h file and we want an outlet for this text field an outlet and we're going to call it my text field and then we want an action associated with this button okay so if we change the title of this button to add name Okay, and then we want an action. So change outlet to action. And we're going to call the IB action add name to array. Touch up inside sender. Connect that. Now the other thing that we're going to do here is we're going to create a property for a mutable array. Now because an array is not something that you see on screen directly, we can't click and drag. So we're going to have to create this property by hand. So we just choose at property, strong, non-atomic. Now we're not connecting the array we're not connecting anything on the screen to code so we don't need an IB outlet all we need is to list the class in its mutable array give it a name and we're going to call this add names array 